Welcome to Simple GIS Software Video Tutorials. Today we'll be discussing creating and modifying symbols in our Simple GIS client application. To begin with, we have a Simple GIS client project file that we've loaded. We see that we have several layers added into our project and we have several legends set. If we were to draw graphics in this view, by selecting some of our draw options, so I can draw points, lines, can draw polygons, and as we draw these graphics, we see that they are already symbolized with some default symbols, and these are set from our view properties. If we look under our view properties, we see that there are default graphic symbols set for points, lines, text, and polygons. However, we can change the symbol of a specific graphic at any time by using our Select Graphic tool, double-clicking the graphic, and double-clicking on the symbol. At that point, you would be presented with a symbol palette based upon the type of symbol that we're looking at. In this case, since it's a point, we see all the various marker or point symbols available. And we can simply select a new symbol, and we now see that we've changed the symbol for that graphic. We can also change our default symbols under our view properties. So if we went to our view properties, and in this case we double clicked on our line symbol, and just selected one of the other symbols from the symbol palette, as we hit OK, and then select apply, if we were to go and draw a new line at this point, we would see that it would be rendered with a new default symbol we selected. So this is one way we can control the symbology in our project and also change specific symbols for graphics. Also, we could go back to our default symbols and as we double click on a symbol in the palette that appears, we have an option of choosing a pre-existing symbol as we stated before. Or we can create a new symbol from scratch, which is what we'll demonstrate here. So we'll scroll down to the bottom of our palette and we're going to double click in one of the empty cells. As we double click, we'll be presented with a new Create New Symbol dialog box. And this dialog box is made up of several tabs. You have marker and text settings, pen settings, and brush settings. And all three of these combine to make the composite symbol. So for instance, if we go to the marker and text settings and we're going to make a brand new marker symbol. And a marker symbol is, can be made up of one or more fonts. So we already have one font, font zero layer added. So we're going to select a font name that we want to use for this. So we're going to select the geo symbols, which is installed with simple GIS client. And then we're going to change the font character to select the actual character or symbol that we want to use for this particular symbol. So if we get to font character 33, which is the circle symbol. And we're going to leave our font size set to 8, but we could change this if we wish to. And then we can also click on the font color button to change the color of the font. So we're going to set this to red. And then we have some options here to actually add offsets in the X and Y direction. So if we decrease our X offset, and then we're also going to decrease our Y offset. And we'll see as we do so that the actual symbol moves in relation to the origin. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and layer another font on top of this one. So now as we click the plus button, we see that another font layer gets added, layer 1. And for the font we want to use, we want to go back and use geo symbols once again. We're also going to use the same font character that we used before because what we're going to make is a small reflection on top of the red ball that we added. However, we'll notice that the new font we added obscures part of the underlying layer. And this is because of the brush that's assigned to each font. So for this particular font layer that we're added, we want to set the brush style to clear such that the background doesn't obscure the underlying fonts. And so now we see that we've removed the obscurity. And in this case, 
we're now going to change our font size to 4, so about half the size of our original, and we're going to change the font color to white for our reflected surface. And then we're also going to change our X offset And we're also going to change our Y offset. And this just moves our little reflective ball. And then the last thing we're going to do is change the opacity to let a little bit of the red shine through our white reflective surface. So as we change the opacity of this font, we're actually making it a little bit more transparent to allow the background layers to show through a little more. Now I'll go ahead and add a new font layer. And for this, we're going to make a stem and we're going to use a different font. We'll choose Arial in this case. And then the actual font character we'll use is font character 5, which is kind of the bar symbol. And we'll increase the font size a little bit to a 10. And we're also going to make it bold to make it a little bit thicker. And then we'll also change its color to red as well. And then finally, we'll adjust the X and the Y offset. Now we'll go ahead and we'll add another font layer. And for the font name, we're going to go back to our Geo Symbols font. And again, we're going to use the 33 character. And we're actually going to make a little bit of a 3D effect. So you'll use this as a shadow to give a little bit of depth to the symbol. So we'll kind of adjust our X and Y offset in a position that would look like our marker symbol is casting a shadow. And then we're going to change the opacity since our font is a, a solid black. We're going to change it to make it a little bit of a light gray. And this allows a transparency to allow background layers to show through on this as well to give it more of a shadow effect. So finally, we're going to add another font layer for our shadow stem. And so we're going to choose Arial again. We're going to use the five character, which is the bar. And we'll make it bold to make it a little bit thicker. And now we'll adjust our offsets a little bit to get them positioned correctly. And what we're going to do now is actually alter the rotation of this font layer so we're actually rotating the stem to match our shadow. So now that we got it in position, we'll change our opacity of this as well. And finally, we're going to add one more font layer for one small change. So for our font name, we'll go back and we'll select Geo Symbols again. And we'll go back to our circle character, which is character 33. And we're going to change this to a font size of 2, so it's really small. And what we're going to do is just kind of highlight our reflection on our marker. So we're going to adjust the offset of this little circle and place it on top of the other reflective circle we placed earlier. We'll change our font color to white. And then we'll change our opacity just to soften the reflection. So now as we click apply, we see the symbol appear in our palette. If we click apply, we can now go, and if we draw new points on our map, 
we see that the new marker symbol we created is used to render the points. We also know because of the shadow and the opacity or transparency that we set on the shadow, you can see that that allows background layers to show through the shadow. Some of the other options we can do in symbols, for instance, if we look at a polygon symbol, as I stated earlier, you have markers, pens, and brushes that all make up a symbol. So if we went to our marker and text settings, and if we set our, a font, and let's go back to our geo symbols, and this time we'll use a font character of 34, which is kind of a triangle shape. And then if we go to our pen settings, and we see that we have a pen at it, but there's a marker stylus property as well. And what this is, is whatever we have set for a font as a marker, we can use this to stylize our pen by selecting a pattern for the image locations. And we have a marker stylus spacing of 15, which is 15 times the width of the pen. So if we had changed our pen width, for instance, to a 2.25, you see that it changes the spacing of our markers because our stylus was 15 times the pen width. And now if we looked at our brush, we see that the pen outline used for the brush has our new pen settings with the markers on it. Once we've completed our symbol, we could also choose to save our symbol to a file if we wanted to by simply clicking on the Save Symbol button, selecting a folder location, and giving it a name for our symbol, and clicking the Save. And now if we click Apply, we see our symbol in our palette, and we also see it on our default. But since we had saved our symbol, we could also reload it at any time if we lost it in our palette by simply double clicking to create a new symbol and then clicking the load symbol button, selecting the file we saved it to, and we now see that it loaded the symbol again. And now to see our new symbol in action, we'll just go draw a new polygon. And we now see it rendered with the new symbol that we had just created. Some of the other interesting features that we can do with symbols is with pens, for instance. We can layer pens just like we layered fonts for our marker symbols. So if I go to our default line symbol and I'm going to create a new symbol and I go to the pen settings tab. I see that I have one pen already added, and I'm going to change its width to 4.5 to make it quite thick. And then I'm going to add another pen by clicking on the plus button, and I'm going to change its color to orange, and then I'm going to change its pen width to a little bit less. And now you see that we have a nice bordered pen symbol. And we can also change the style of our topmost pen from solid to dash. And we can see the effect of that as we change the pen style. And we can even select custom to create our own pen spacing. And we use the stylus list box to do this. And we click the plus button to add in spacing for our own custom spacing pattern. And as we add these spacing values, we see that we can create a unique spacing pattern for the pen. In addition, we can also edit existing symbols in a palette. For example, on our text symbol, instead of creating a new symbol, we'll just double click on the first symbol in the palette. And we see that it's just a simple font symbol it has Arial as its font. And in this case, we're going to change it to Microsoft Sans Serif. And what we're going to do is make a halo text symbol. So we'll select Microsoft Sans Serif for our font. And now what we want to do is go to our pen settings tab and we're going to add a pen. 
I'm going to select the pin and we're going to change its width. And then we'll set its color to blue. Now to see the result of this, we'll go to our composite symbol tab and we see what the final result of the symbol will look like. We notice that blue is a little bit harder to read the font, so we're going to change that from blue to yellow. And now as we look at our composite symbol, we see that it's much easier to read. And now we'll go ahead and click OK to apply this symbol, and we'll apply our view properties. And if we were to now add text to our map, we would see that it would pick up our default symbol. So we'll just type in some text in our text box here. And we see that it's now rendered with the halo text symbol that we just created. So this concludes our tutorial for today. I hope you found this useful in helping you to create and modify your own symbols in simple GIS software.